smoothly. Thank you, Seika. These things are awesome. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about Seika brakes. I can't brag about these enough. I've had them on the car a couple months now. I wanted to make sure to do a complete test of them and make sure that I, you know, I love them and they work fantastic and everything before I vouch for them, essentially. So I'm making sure to do that on my channel. Everything's gonna be 100% unbiased, regardless of if it's sponsored or not. It's all gonna be 100% honest, so that's what you have to look forward to. And I'm so happy to say that these things kick ass. So thank you very much, Seika, for sponsoring me. This is their big brake kit. I have them on the front and the rear of my S14 now. These particular ones in the rear have their dual brake system or their drift brake system, which is a really, really cool feature. So we'll kind of get into that a little bit, but essentially what it means is you have a four piston caliper, and if you don't know what that means, you have two pistons on each side that are opposed and they squeeze on the rotor. So on this particular one, it is a dual caliper system for the handbrake. So the top two pistons operate the handbrake and the bottom two pistons operate the foot brake completely independent in one caliper. And that is such a cool feature that almost nobody or maybe anyone is doing. I don't know, I haven't seen it on the market. So that's a really, really cool thing. It simplifies things, it reduces weight, it also allows you to, you know, have a gigantic brake caliper uh, bolted to a stock knuckle. So all of these things are, are good things and it works perfectly. So uh, this video is just kind of revealing that, thanking Seika for sponsoring me, but also showing you guys how to install it. So if you are curious about that, we're going to show you exactly what I did to install this. Uh, you know, you can take what you learned from this video and kind of expand upon it and do it your own way. Uh, this is how I did it. It's not necessarily the best way or the only way. It's just the way that I chose to do it. All right, so I am building a bracket. This is going to be for my Seika brakes that I'm now installing, which I'm really excited about. They include these factory style brake lines. So they have this little nut and you can bolt it to the stock brake line bracket. And then it's got a banjo and that goes into the caliper just like any quality brake system. However, because I'm running the dual purpose rear caliper, which means one set of the pistons is the foot brake and one set is the handbrake. Uh, I'm going to, now going to have two brake lines running to it. And so the way I have it set up right now, because the knuckle has the calipers on the opposite ends, it's got a brake line under the front and a brake line to the rear. So I'm going to eliminate that and I'm going to have two brake lines kind of mirroring the factory routing. And they're both going to be just exactly next to each other. So what I'm doing is I'm building a kind of mock bracket that's just like the OEM one that I'm going to put right next to it and that's going to be where I put the secondary brake line to hold it. Perfect. And then I'm just going to cut along these lines and that'll be the bracket that I can weld onto the chassis. That's 285 meat! Look at that, perfect tire wear. Only six laps. I was really rough to these. Usually they'll last like 30 laps, but now when you get really angry and sh upshift and drift and then floor it. So this is our old setup, dual Z32 calipers. They're off a of 300ZX. So you can see this is the factory line. Nice little bracket right here. And this is the factory style brake line that goes to the caliper. So it's got a little retaining clip. You can see that it's mounted to the chassis with this hard line here. Well, this is the other one that I built using some factory parts, but basically I you know, put this little adapter block here, I ran this loop line, and then I put just a little Adele clamp. You can see back here. Nothing that great, honestly. <laughs> it's not my best work, I'll be honest, but it works. And then this is the brake line here. It does clear and everything just fine, but now what's gonna happen is the brake caliper is gonna be up front only. So I don't need any of that stuff back there. So it's gonna simplify things and I can eliminate basically all of that. So now I just need to start taking all this apart. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull the lines off. First I'm gonna get a drip pan. Uh, yeah, so on this side, Austin's doing the same thing I'm doing over here. We're just trying to double team it, knock it out quick. There we go. Good to go, send it. Just slide on 
your fittings before you flare it. <laughs> Such a thing that happens on everyone who's building these for the first time. You forget to put this on, you flare it, and then you're like, ah, oh, crap, now I have to cut it off and start over. Put a little dab of grease or some sort of lubricant on there. And you should be able to do this part by hand. This shouldn't take any tools or anything. Nice, smooth, even flare all the way around. So now, 100% every time, make sure you clean this brake line out. So squirt a little brake cleaner in there, hit it with some air both directions, make sure it's completely clean before you install it. Put some glue on these threads, clean it out if you have to. And I like to go ahead and run the nut on it while it's still wet, so you can kind of get the threads of the nut ready to go as well. That way you know it's all worked in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put these nice caps that they ship with back. So that's gonna be the one that I feed through here. So I'll put that on. <laughs> that was way harder than it should have been. Okay, so it's at this point you wanna make sure this is oriented how you want it. I want the 45 or maybe even 30 to be bent out like that towards the chassis. So this is exactly how I want it. Okay, that's tight. Now is when I can, you know, get this line over. So I have to kind of think about how to bend it. Okay, so I need to put a little bit more of a upward, take a little slack out. Make sure you clean this all off as best you can. And this does need to go on straight, so it doesn't look like it's wanting to. Always try and get it started by hand to make sure that you're not cross-threading it before you put a tool on it. Okay, so once you get it tight, Remember to cross over to a line wrench and then make sure you're holding the line itself. You don't have to go too tight on this. It's a fairly soft metal. There you go, one down. So now I'll put the other Seca line in place of the stock one. The nut goes on top. Now I need to get the line wrench, tighten this, that's it. Both of them are done. Look at that, nice and clean install. I don't even need a, an Adele clamp on that, that's perfectly fine. That is stout, it hugs the chassis nicely, everything looks good. I tighten that up and that's all I needed. So, simple, clean install. Next we can move on to the rotors and calipers. Okay, we've got the lines done. Next we're gonna install the adapter bracket. So this is gonna be where they can adapt their four piston caliper, six piston caliper, whatever caliper you got from them to whatever chassis. This is gonna be right here. So there's the part number for this one. You know, it's gonna be dependent on your application. Everyone's gonna have a little bit different setup. So next, I wanna talk about these right here. These are shims, and this is really nice that they include these. These really thin, machined, precise shims are hard to find locally, and it's not something you may have laying around. But what this is gonna do is gonna space the caliper differently depending on how the setup is. So, you know, your, your car might have a slightly different hub depth or maybe the, there's a little bit different tolerances between like the hub that you're using. If it's an aftermarket one, this could be slightly thicker or whatever. Lots of different variables. You know, you've got a different knuckle here. It's an aftermarket knuckle. Lots of different things could happen here. So what we wanna do is try and get that caliper spaced perfectly in between where the rotor is gonna go so that there's little amount of, the least amount of drag and it's not rubbing on anything. I'm gonna start with two. They give you eight shims, so four per bolt. Put the bolt in here, put the shims on. Real quick, I just wanted to show that I had actually installed these brackets incorrectly. I put them on the back side of the knuckle like this, and I had a small issue with them, so Cedric was very kind and told me, oh, just gotta put them on the other side. So I'll just do a flip them put them like this. The spacing is almost identical, but it's not. It's close, but it's off by a couple millimeters. So this actually is what the correct way should be. It's a little addendum to the video here. If you guys are buying these for your S chassis, they install just like this. The bolts going in from the back side and the bracket on the knuckle like that. Again, double check, right caliper on the right side, the bleeder valves need to be up in the upward position. So it's installed now. 
But now we're going to check and make sure that the shim stack is correct. So again, we're trying to make sure that the rotor is lined up dead center with the mounted with a wheel on rotor. So you're trying to see right here how that lines up with the middle of this rotor. I haven't really poked my head in there to look at it yet, but it's tough to see on camera, but you can see it in real life. All right, just to be an extra particular about this, I'm gonna get in here and actually measure it. Okay, so it actually is off by one shim. Pull it back a fart. We knew we had to pull this off one more time anyway because we have to red Loctite those mounting bolts. So far, pretty smooth install. Uh, the front was just the same. I didn't film the front. Sorry, everyone. It's just like this, only one less brake line. But uh, very simple setup. You got a shim stack. You got a bracket that goes on the factory knuckle or an aftermarket knuckle that's got a factory spacing for it. Check your you know, rotor with the wheel spacer put on. Bolt it on. Measure it. Make sure it's good. If it is, send it. If not, pull it off, redo it. But yeah, make sure you get the red Loctite on here. Very, very important step. And then you want to torque it to an, the appropriate amount. It might be on Seika's website. You can also just look up the size and grade of the bolt that you're using and it will have a universal torque spec. Three shims. Seika Loctite straight from France. Looks so good. Okay, done. So that is installed. It's not a bad idea to clean all this with some brake clean um, just to make sure that there's no greasy stuff from your hands that may have gotten on there. And then the final bit is to get our brake lines installed. All right, so next we take our banjo bolt. You guys see there's a crush washer on it right here. It actually comes with two crush washers, but you have to take one off and you have to install it on the other side of the banjo. So the way this works, get this where you think it's gonna be. So this is gonna be the bolt through here. And then you put the other crush washer on the back side of it so that you can see there's a crush washer on both sides. And you can do this dry. You don't need any Teflon or lubricant or glue or any kind of anything to install banjos. These should go in just dry. Okay, now you wanna try and pay attention to how this is oriented so that it's not gonna get in the way of anything. Move it or position it where you know it's gonna be happy. Now here's also the time where you decide which one of these is foot brake and which one is hand brake. Okay, so the factory one is where I'm looking right here. It's gonna go up to here. Hmm, I might want to, I might wanna swap these because I'm looking right here, this, this brake line is kind of running into my lower control arm and my lower control arm or my suspension is in droop right now, which means it's gonna only go up, mm -hmm. making things worse. So instead, I'm gonna take this out, see how it looks. Okay, so I like that better. However, we've got kind of an abrupt bend right here. So what I think I'm gonna do for the final is I'm gonna flip this to where that 45 is now bending the opposite direction and that's gonna give me the most clearance. Now what I could do uh, is loosen up on this side to kind of allow that some slack, which I might end up having to do. But let's just see how this goes in here. Okay, that looks good to me. Nothing's bound up, plenty of articulation. So in other words, when the tr suspension does go full droop, this is gonna be where the brake line ends up. And then this one, just gonna do it like that. Okay, those are done. So I'm gonna zip tie them together so that they move in unison. That's in there, that's tight, that's tight, that's tight. These two are tight and torqued. Caliper is right in the middle. Looks good. All right, so we're finished. All done. Uh, one thing I forgot to talk about was this little guy. This is just a brake line uh, bracket. They give you this, this is really nice. It grabs onto that little rubber donut thing you saw on there, and then this just is a universal hole that you can bolt onto anything. 
I don't end up needing these on my setup, but it's really nice that they include them. I did use these up front. They bolted right onto the BC coilovers, right where the factory one would, and they work fantastic. So um, just one more added nice little thing that they do. They, they give you the full package. You don't really have to fabricate or build or have any kind of fancy tools or anything. You just get to bolt it on and go. Now with a dual caliper setup, depending on what lines you have, obviously you might need a little bit of fabrication there, but uh, in terms of just, you know, a brake upgrade, these are right out of the box, ready to bolt done. Success, everything went smoothly. Thank you, Seika. These things are awesome, very easy to use, worked right out of the box. You guys included everything. It was really fantastic. Thank you for making a quality product. It looks beautiful. It's gigantic. It's going to be awesome on the car. Uh, 18s will barely fit over it, which is fine. Uh, keep in mind, guys, when you go to bleed it, you do have two bleeder screws. Remember, it's two completely independent systems now. So this pair will be the foot brake, this pair will be the handbrake, or vice versa, depending on how you round the lines. So keep that in mind when you're bleeding them. But it bleeds just like any other caliper. Pop the little nipple and then crack it open, put a bleeder bottle on it if you got one, and have a friend pump the pedal or use a vacuum bleeder, whatever you do. And yeah, works great. So I'm going to kind of button things up here. I'm going to finish the other side. I'm not going to film that because there's no need. Uh, it's just the same exact process as this. And um, yeah, get it bled. Go test it out. Give it a rip. See how you like it. That's sick. Look at that thing. Oh.